So this is Lol Cow. This is the podcast that Keem, Wings, and Boogie were on. This is them after two hours of going in on Boogie. Mudahar is there. Destiny came in earlier and Boogie pulled life and threatened to It was a mess. This is the last 30 minutes that I think is probably the most interesting. And this is the part I want to cover here. It cost me a fortune in appointments. We have tested for the markers. We have tested my red blood cell count. I'm taking special medication specifically that got prescribed because of this diagnosis. So diagnosis. my original, my, my original it's theory. In my medical charts, my brother. That's why I keep telling I know, you. You're I, saying the same thing. You're looping. Listen, four days ago, I put out a theory that your doctor told you he thinks you have this and you rushed to the internet, you made the video the same day. This was my theory, and that's what happened. It's in my medical charts. Four days ago, he it says that he saw- So he says the cancer is in my medical charts. It's in my medical charts. But they asked him to only show up to LulCow if he brought his medical charts with him, but what he brought instead was his portal. If you guys have a medical portal, which I do, my medical portal, it doesn't have all of the comprehensive information necessarily, but it has like everything I'm diagnosed with, right? My fibromyalgia and my borderline and all that stuff. Though I do have to log into different doctor portals because different things have different things. So that kind of sucks, but it is there. And it probably, it has some blood charts as some medical paperwork too. There's only a couple things really missing from my portals. All these, all these but, on but the list. But he didn't, but he Today didn't. He doesn't. He didn't. He didn't. That was Today wrong. He doesn't. Get at, or David, I'm going to play, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. He still might have the cancer. Exactly. Which I do. Done exactly. Which I do. Exactly. But you're you're right. Right. Problem is now, of course, we do not know for a fact if Boogie has cancer. There is. This is why I say believe in knowing is different. I believe Boogie doesn't have cancer, but I don't know that. To say you know something, you can't argue with me. I know it. So he's saying, I do have cancer. Is you've made us sit here nine hours to get the answer that we knew in hour one. No, you, I've given you the answer the whole nine hours, which is yeah. I have the cancer i'm being treated for the cancer it's expensive no, 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 no. You, no, 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 no. i told you that a million times that's the truth that. the only thing i didn't tell you is it's not in the portal and again if i wanted to lie to you i would have just photoshopped something and said i'm telling you over and over and over again it's only First in my all. medical charts and i will not share my medical charts i said First this a hundred times it's only in my medical charts calm and i will not send my medical charts calm down First off, you guys no, have I'm in a goddamn you uh, anxiety attack i'm in the middle of, I, I, I don't have to fucking calm down stop Breathe in, but breathe you, out. Let you, just listen to wings. Don't talk. Go on mute. You 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 most likely have the cancer, right? But you haven't gone through all the steps, so you can't say you have the cancer or not, right? Exactly. And, and I find it very hard to believe, and I'm not willing. He to just said exactly. He probably does have the cancer, but he hasn't gone through all the steps to confirm the cancer. I understand this, but it's it's still a problem that he went on the internet, that he made a big video, that you know what I mean. It's like, bro, and my, reminder that Boogie's like 48 years old. He old man. The disbelief it's that fine, three doctors Stop you said freaking out. That, no, that's why so they wanted to. Put it oh, in the chart. That's why it fucking sucks that you that I'm getting called by all of my favorite fucking creators a liar when I'm not fucking lying. You and lied one and a half years ago about a diagnosis. Ooh, I love the crying. I love like pulling up the cry. I love the voice. This is what I mean. What do you want me to do with this grown man? Wish him the best. Good luck, bro. You're on your own. This is interesting though, because there's a part of him that doesn't feel very malicious, but there's a part of him that feels very pathetic and sad and traumatized. He says, My favorite content creators but he won't even show it to them in private. That's interesting. So that no, I did because he fucking told me. My doctor fucking told me I have cancer. God damn it. It's in my fucking medical charts. My brother's fucking seen it. Where is the fucking lie? My girlfriend sat there while he fucking said it. My brother's seen my medical charts. My friends have taken me to fucking visits where they took my fucking blood. It's all right. It's all right. It's fine. It's fine. Now we got to why we can't see the records. It's fine. Just calm down. But like we, we haven't, this is what I'm saying. Your job is, okay. There's a level of introspection that's necessary here to make your life go smoother. Why doesn't he take the opportunity to make his life easier? Why don't we take the opportunities to make our life easier when it's obvious what it is? It's obvious that this would make your life easier by just showing it. If there's actually a reason not to show it, you could interview your doctor. You could do so many things, but there's no reason not to show the medical paperwork, even though he keeps saying there is a reason. He's saying, my brother saw the paperwork. My family, my girlfriend saw the, like, she knows. Wings, what he just said is you probably do have cancer. You just need it more tests. It's fine. Yep. You jump the gun. I know how this works. I'm a YouTuber too. You know, you jump the gun, you rush, you make a mistake. Everyone knows the old man that I accused of being a f I fucking had to eat crow on that. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Fuck you, Keemstar. Yeah, you did. Now, good question, Alex. Alex says, if he didn't have cancer, would he still be have love from his family and his girlfriend? Maybe a long time ago, he was getting kicked out and this saved him. Okay, this is interesting. 
Because I know in my original video, people were like very upset that I said, I would, even if my siblings told me they had cancer, I'd want to see the paperwork. And somebody was like, I think trolling, but they're like, you're so cruel, bro. Look, it's not about me not believing you. It's about me needing to believe reality, which is hard to comprehend that you have cancer. It's a very big deal. So it's hard for me to comprehend it, especially, you know, in this situation, I would want to see it so I can help to the best of my ability so I could really, you know, believe it. Not that I think you're lying, but I think sometimes in life we miscommunicate a lot. Like humans are just so flawed. So in this situation, the boogie is signaling to us that something is a lie because he's hiding something. That's why it feels like we can't trust him because before we trusted him, but then something didn't match up. And so now we're waiting to, we're giving, look how many opportunities the internet is giving him. So boogie is processing this as like a mob rule and the internet is giving him an an opportunity to redeem himself funny enough. Like funny enough, the internet's like, prove it to us. Because how stupid would we all look if he could prove it to us? How fucking dumb is Destiny gonna look if Boogie proves he has cancer and he always had it all along? And he actually was hiding it for a good reason. Like the guy from uh, Black Panther who had cancer and didn't want to tell anyone because he thought he might get fired from the movies. Well, everybody made fun of him. Remember how everyone made fun of him for being skinny and they're like, oh, you don't eat. Chad Chadwick Boseman. And then we all look fucking dumb. Not me. I would never bully someone for looking too skinny. But like, y'all look fucking dumb because he actually had cancer. How amazing would it be for Boogie to prove that he has cancer right now? Oh my God. It would change. It would and blow the internet up. But the fact that he isn't doing it and the fact that he's not taking the opportunity to fix his life in this way, that's where we think the lie is. Because why would you do that? Unless you're lying. And I know some people had commentary about my Cody Ko situation. Look, Cody Ko, not talking about Tana and the issues, I think is still better for his career outside of YouTube. Pulu says, well, the standard of proving it keeps changing. They will not be satisfied. Destiny already suggested the doctors are wrong. So there's also been... Some changing of the goalposts where people have said, well, even if he has it on paperwork, we have to talk to a doctor. And even if a doctor says it, they could be wrong. So yes, obviously some part of the internet will never be satisfied with him proving it. Yes, he could have a doctor on stream and people are like, that's a fake doctor. He could show his paperwork and people are like, that's fake, right? So no matter what happens, somebody will change the goalpost. And that also sucks. So maybe Bookie shouldn't prove that he has cancer. Who knows? What would you do if you were a boogie? What would you have done if you were a boogie and you got diagnosed? Look, I think about it all the time. If I got a really serious illness, when would I tell the internet? What if I was dying? When would I tell you guys? And I do think about it because I'm getting old now and I got to think about my will and I got to think about my YouTube channel and I got to tell my loved ones what to do with it if I die or if I get hit by a bus or if something happens, like, you know, obviously what's the rule on Brittany's channel if I'm gone for three days or more and I don't tell anybody, including the Discord, I'm dead. <laughs> unless there's an internet power outage in all of Europe, I'm dead. Okay, so what would you do if you were a big boogie? Would you share that you had a cancer diagnosis? Because now it looks like he only shared it for sympathy and money. You jumped the gun, you rushed, you made the video. Like every YouTuber makes mistakes like this. This is crazy how this played out, but I know you. I know as soon as the doctor told you it might be this, you had a panic attack and you rushed the internet to tell them. I know this. Based on everything you told me, I've pieced this together right away. I know you, you well know. enough. He's never said might. He says, we are treating you for this cancer. But it's we are not in your portal. He's not putting I it understand. on your portal. I understand. It's my it's my understanding. And uh, 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 Muda's daddy doctor or whoever, or the doctor that was on here earlier can confirm, the treatments are pretty much the same. You do the same thing. You monitor the red blood cell count. You try to bring it down. You give the medications and treatments that, that bring it down. When it gets high enough, you blood let. They can literally take your blood or you can go donate it. We've done all of these things. We are treating me for the cancer, whether I have it or not, I guess. Maybe when not treating you for the cancer, test. There you go. That's whether you have it or not. Your doctor thinks this They're is a See, he keeps doing it, whether you have it or not. The fact that Keemstar is the voice of reason in this conversation, shout out to Mudahar, is like, bro. Okay, because I like Mudahar. <laughs> but like, I keep forgetting he's there. Um, but like, that's the boogies. Like, his language is so interesting, whether you have it or not. This is my issue I had. And look. I think it is so appropriate to self-diagnose with certain things. 
autism, ADHD, that's a really lived experience. Now, of course, obviously it'd be really great to confirm it. For some people, that's really important. For other people, it's not. Okay, I don't want to get into the discussion about self-diagnosis in that capacity. But I think like this is why I get frustrated when people get on the internet. You know who I'm talking about? I forgot her name. What's her name? Oh my God, how did I forget this girl's name? You know which girl I'm talking about. Luna, Luna Love, Lo Love. What's her name? Loon? Oh my God. Why do I forget people's names? The Loon girl? who goes, I have borderline. I think I have borderline. This girl does not have borderline. She was never diagnosed with borderline. And she's sitting here with her crazy neuroses, whatever it is. And she's acting crazy. And I'm like, what are you doing? You do not have borderline. Why would you even want to fake having borderline? The stigma is so not worth it, girl. Even, what are you talking about? Like, what are you doing? What is that girl's name? Loon? Loon? Loon. Lav. Lav. Loon. Thank you, Mariah. Lav Loon. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot Lav's name. Rip. Okay, she going around be like, I have borderline. You do not have borderline. You were never diagnosed with borderline. And now everyone's going around being like, see how crazy borderline girls are? Great. Thanks, Lav. Super great. Look, you're fucked if you give a diagnosis. You're fucked if you're not. Remember that if the internet didn't know I have borderline, they would never be able to use it against me. The fact that when they disagree with me, they go, that's your borderline. What if you didn't know I had borderline? What would it be then? I'm in remission. You can't use my borderline against me. But since they know my diagnosis, they use it against me. If Boogie comes out with his cancer diagnosis, maybe he's worried that it will come out something else he has and they'll use it against him. So there's something about that that's interesting. When do you share a diagnosis with the internet and when don't you? Because I do it to help people to know you can get remission and you can have your whole life and everything can be great. The borderline is absolutely something you can work on. It's not a big deal unless it's untreated. But if it's treated, you're going to have a great life. Trust me. But what if there's something Boogie really does know about himself that would make him look worse, which at this point would be amazing. It'd almost be, ooh, the greatest tea of the universe. Tea emoji in the chat, guys. Tea emoji in the chat. What if there's something more? And that's what my brain goes to because I'm in ch I'm open-minded. Beza said, Lav out here being a horrible representation for BPD girlies and she doesn't even have a diagnosis. She doesn't even have a, like, a diagnosis as far as I know, as far as I know. I haven't talked. I blocked her a very long time ago. So I don't know if she got a diagnosis in her adulthood, but as far as I know, she doesn't. Possibility. So they've been treating it. Everything that, said, everything that, that I you do. showed us, everything that you showed us isn't them treating you for cancer. They're treating you for an overabundance of red blood cells, which they haven't wrote down. They I even put the CPAP machine. Vera, and you can they Google put, this. They put sleep apnea. I understand all this, but what but, you've but told listen, us, listen, the information you've given you me. Treat it. That's how you treat it. That's how you treat information it. Information you've given me, they don't know what they're looking for, and they're putting you on general medicines that fix mm -hmm. the red blood cell problem. Yes, because with this cancer, you can't attack it directly. Chemo isn't a thing you do for this thing unless it turns into leukemia. That's my explanation of it. That's very so, rare, uh, by the way. Right, exactly. 5% after 10 years, 10% after 20. What normally kills somebody with this is something I'm already high risk for, which is what? stroke and heart no, no, no. attack. Here, here's the next step, Boogie. Here, here's the next step. Here's the next step. The next step is you do that bone marrow test study well, no, and the next you do test sure your prostate not, study yeah first we're going to do the ass cancer thing because it's the most obvious one and we have signs of it and i right. will tell you check for your check your ass guys colon cancer is on rise in millennials okay we i'm, I'm gonna get a colonoscopy and maybe i'll talk about it to, maybe i'll do a podcast on it but i'm gonna get one i told myself because a tiktok dad died on tiktok in his 30s from colon cancer that's crazy to me that colon cancer is on the rise check your butts check your butts you need, to, you need to do Wait, that, but like, no, but like, no, no. If your doctor, if your doctor says you have ass cancer, you don't tell us on the show. You don't tell anyone. You keep it to yourself okay. until you get like, right. three different confirmations, You're and right. then I probably won't even share it. Then. Don't share it unless it's on your fucking portal. I mean, even though. don't. True. Don't even make sure or say I'm not sure. The problem is that Boogie came out very strongly. I have cancer. If he had just said, I think it's cancer. I think it's cancer. I think it's it might be cancer. None of this would be happening. It's the fact that you doubled down and you said you did have cancer for sure, for sure. Not that you were still testing. Not that now Boogie's doing the story that he should have done from the beginning, which is they think it's cancer. I'm getting treated. It might be cancer. I'm still trying to figure it out. You know? Even sure. then, I was like, because here's I the thing, Boogie. Okay, we've admitted that PV isn't in your medical charts, right? Yes. I guess. Yes. But you said your brother saw your brother like saw it on the medical chart. So what the mm. fuck? It, it is in the medical charts. It's not on the portal. I don't know why it's not on the portal. There's several other things that we've oh discussed. None is not on the portal. It's not in the medical know. charts either. But then apparently well, the brother has seen I, it. I, 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 it's not there. I, I, I'd make that call right now. It's no, my brother's fake his reputation. What's most the likely there? What's most likely there is a packet of papers, and those packet of papers are like where like the registered nurse is pulled possible information about it. Yeah, information Correct. about it. Yeah. 
Because it was a possibility. That's what I'm saying in paper. Yeah, Wings, you're right. It was a possibility. They give him paperwork. He shows the paperwork to his brother, right, and asks questions about it. But nothing's been confirmed. That's where this, all this, these problems happen. Here's, again, here's the confirmation, though. For the last two years, I've been spending a shitload of money to make sure that I don't get a stroke or a heart attack from a blood clot. So yeah, maybe maybe it will turn out that it's polycythemia second. Good point, Alex. G great point. Alex says he could fake the document, but he doesn't want to do that. It's so weird. He's being honest and deceptive. He's telling the kind of lie that you tell that is he's not creating a paper trail. He's creating a verbal trail. So his ver if he made a fake document, then there'd be a physical trail to his lies. But because it's now verbal, it's a he said she said, right? Only it's a he said, he said, I guess, because his doctor's male, or I guess, I don't know. The idea is that Boogie's type of lying is kind of the best form because all you have is his word. The reason they want documentation is to prove his word is a lie. But if he never gives up the documentation, how do you prove the word is a lie? And so he's kind of like, that's why he comes off slightly honest because he's not faking a document. And like yeah. the doctor that on here earlier said, there are other cancers that can cause polycythemia. And that's one of the things we're worried about. So again, my doctor has now shifted. I don't know what markers he's seeing. I don't know. I don't know. I just know he says, well, it's time to look for other cancers. Let's start with the, the butt test. And then I said, what about the bone marrow test? He goes, it's unnecessary. We know. And you're you're looping. You're looping. We're just yeah. saying the same thing over and over again. How do you let, me, let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you a secret, but it's going to help you out here. See, you don't know how to read your medical, your pathology tests. We just had a doctor in here that could read pathology. No, my brother. Been happy. I know, no, my brother. No, an actual doctor. Your, do your brother's not yeah, a medical your doctor. Not an he can still read it. He's a, a practicing epidemiologist. Right, but we had, a guy that was a, we had a guy that was a practicing medical doctor here that could very easily read your pathology test and tell you what's going on with you. Yes, I, so I you have a doctor that does that already. I have Use three. your resources. I have three. I have three doctors right now already. Boogie, once you, want, because you've already shared this, if you do get confirmation and it is in your portal and you have paperwork, show the internet. Don't play around. You've already shared this, all right? Once you get like real confirmation, I will share it privately with you and only you. As okay. far as I know, it's so bad that he has just blatantly lied about all of this. I so haven't blatantly far. lied about no. a single goddamn thing. I four days ago, I can see this policy. Four days ago, you did lie about that. Four that. days later, you yeah, that I did lie about. <laughs> <laughs> that I did lie about. <laughs> that was fucking poetry. That was art. Oh, that was art, bro. He goes. I didn't lie about a goddamn thing. And then Keemstar's like, you did lie about that. He goes, oh, I did lie about that, though. This is art. What's that? What's that? TikTok art? It's like, the, like he, this is art, bro. This is a work of art. That was, ooh, that was synchronized swimming. That was so good. <laughs> Yeah, I panicked and I lied about it there. Yes, I okay, thank you for admitting that. Ago, you had a diagnosis, yeah, now we're going to identify, identify a different version. So, yes. because, lies, I knew, because I know that it's, because because I know that it's in my medical charts because my brother has seen it. My brother saw you it. You just said it's not in your medical charts. No, I said it is. My brother just said it is. Uh, 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 Jordy said he doesn't believe it is. I believe it is. Look, I, I, listen, regardless of whatever lie you think I told, and yes, I did lie, I panicked uh, uh, during that last episode. I know. I panicked, guys, I panicked. I panicked. Do you know how many grown men have said, I just lost my mind, Brittany. I just lost my mind. I was insane, Brittany. You know how many grown men have used that excuse on me? I just lost my mind for a minute, Brittany. I gotta stop. I'm so sick of you. I'm so sick of all these men. I just lost my mind. I, I just panicked. I, I just panicked. Yeah, that's why you're unreliable. Because when you panic, you really hurt yourself and other people, bro. Like, we can move, work with that, but that means you have to understand what this does when you have a pattern. Boogie has a pattern. Nobody's trying to punish you the first time you freak out and make a mistake. No one's trying to punish you when you lose your mind. But when you say you've lost your mind as an excuse, and then later on claim that you're perfectly fine and everyone else is crazy, girl. But I, I could see but, it when you were saying but, it. You're but, like, but, it, it says it right here. I'm like, no, it doesn't, Boogie. But, Come on. But I'm but telling you, but I'm telling like you this. right now, hand to God. On my fucking life. Oh, don't so bring God into no, this. Get listen, out of here. My hand to God. Yeah, I like, I like anybody's going to believe that. Let, let me finish don't a fucking sentence. Let me finish a sentence. So offensive. Okay, uh, to, on Satan's name then. Whatever you fucking pray to. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm saying on my dog's fucking life. For two years. I That dog is dead as bones, bro. That dog is dead. I believe I have cancer. Sitting right now. I believe I have cancer because I've had a doctor tell me over and over and over again, you have cancer and these prescribed medications and we've done treatments right, for that cancer. Have one doctor, apparently a three doctor. All right, guys, yes, I have three. Guys, I have a guys, 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 let's wrap it up. Let's wrap yeah. it up. All right. We, we've solved the mystery. All right. 
Muta, go ahead with final statements. I think Boogie's a complete liar, and I don't think he should be on this show. I think if you guys continue to pay him, you're supporting somebody that would blatantly lie oh, about the Oh, come on. So Muda, this is the part I thought was really interesting. Mudahar says you shouldn't be he shouldn't be on this show, and you're paying like a known liar, and I don't think he should be on the show. Vile thing on the show. 100 percent No. I feel I feel like if you let Boogie on the show, you are supporting somebody that would blatantly lie about one of the most emotionally like destructive things in any society that's where i'm at at least and it's I not just you, me I saying it it's not just me saying it i'm sure you can get the same opinion out of charlie you get the same opinion out of coffee i, I, I can get the same out opinion anybody. out of anyone but mute exactly it, mute, it, mute it this is local mm. live he's i know i know and you know what it's better to it's better to replace him with like review tech usa or somebody else is more like i know but that's what there are limits do. that's it but i mean like there are just certain limits that people have all right and i mean like i think for the people watching like i see it imagine being worse than keemstar Imagine being worse than Keemstar. This is so funny. In the entire, like I've seen it all day in this fucking chat. People have been pissed. They've super chatted about that. It is a fucking travesty to see the again, chat react again, this way. Can yeah, I it's just, it's, wait, let me, let me respond. How fucked is Boogie going to be if he gets cuff, cut off monetarily and permanently from this show? He's always complaining about money and they pay him. He gets a paycheck. This pays his mortgage. So just keep in mind that Boogie, who's always complaining about money, this show pays his mortgage, according to what he said in stream last time. On Boogie, mm -hmm. you sit there and, and help yourself and be quiet right now. And let me actually talk about this. If it okay. was in black and white Muta, where like mm -hmm. the guy came out and said like, I have an ass cancer and he just doesn't have it, fine. But he, his doctor thinks he probably has this and he jumped the gun and made that YouTube video. That's how this whole fucking thing. That just out. shows me he's even worse than I imagined. Cause yes. he's out there literally waiting to like, like fucking clickbait the fact that, Oh shit, I've got yes. cancer written somewhere but in the it's, paperwork. It's, better it, make a video but it's about not it. the same as your typical, I can have cancer scammer who makes a GoFundMe. True. It's, it's mm -hmm. this is gray. True. True. It is gray. Sort of. It is a little bit gray. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about in terms of like, how do you know you're a good person or not? I don't, I don't disagree with him, but it's only gray because Boogie's incompetent. There's a level of being competent and incompetent. So funny enough, Boogie is almost too incompetent to even hold accountable, even though that's not true, but that's the image we're getting. And then you'll have somebody else who's super, super competent in one area. So you don't want to hold him accountable for anything else because, but look how competent he is. This is the other spectrum. There's two spectrums. And so the grayness inside of us that comes out is our inability to, to, very blatantly say good or bad. There is something that's almost hard here. And what I would say is it doesn't matter the gray. I'm going to slide on caution because you're not worth the energy or spoons. In terms of morals, depending on your morals, this is a more gray area. This is coming from like Keemstar. Okay. So he obviously is going to be more gray for him because there is a difference between somebody that's calculated. Like I don't think Boogie's sitting in his room twirling a mustache being like, I'm going to lie about cancer. I think Keem is right that Boogie goes, oh, I have cancer. I'm going to make a video. Maybe I can make some money off of this because I have cancer. Like he is incompetent enough to do something like that. So we excuse the, like that's, I genuinely think Keemstar is right. Now, how do we know? I don't know. That's the question. If I had a brother like Boogie, that's what I do. I always ask myself, what if this was my brother? And to be honest with you, I do know people, they always add in, a combination of a lie and a truth, which makes it harder to dissect, where I don't even think they're being like calculated, which is why I think a predator is different than somebody who does something that's predatory. Like a predator is to me, a person who goes out of their way to like target someone. I don't think Boogie sits in his room and thinks, I'm gonna make up that I have cancer. I think he does use opportunities to get sympathy because he's got that like Munchausen's thing or whatever. He's got this like hard on for needing to be a victim. So I think that's why the gray area is there. And to be fair, when you guys talk about like the homelessness crisis, poverty, I think they're suffering like Boogie's suffering because no way would a competent, healthy person be in a situation like this and they can't dig themselves out. Something's wrong. That's why you're there. And you're usually there because of, well, everything that could have gone wrong in Boogie's life, right? Boogie is a background of poverty. He is a background of not having a stable family. He is a background of, uh, of abuse. And so you end up a boogie. I do think the homeless crisis, the poverty crisis is a mental health crisis. It's why they're the most vulnerable in our communities. And it's why it's so hard to help people because breaking generational curses is so hard, but possible. And lots of people dig themselves out of poverty and lots of people fight their demons and make it out. Okay. And lots of people 
just a shout out to my rich people who are also fucked up. Some of y'all are born into very rich and fucked up families, okay? But poverty is specific and homelessness is specific. It's not poor people. It's poverty people, okay? These are people living on $600 a month, $300 a month, like $1,500. Like, you guys don't understand. Like, they're dealing with, okay, it's different. So Boogie, I think, is sort of somebody that comes from such a bad background. You want to help them. But how do you help somebody who can't help themselves? Which is why I say Boogie's a one on my introspection scale. Because he can neither help himself nor his community. He can't help Keem be able to defend him. And he can't help himself enough to be a good enough person for Keem to be able to defend. He can't figure it out. He can't figure out the loop. He can't figure out two plus two is four. He keeps going two plus two is five. Two plus two is five. My doctor told me two plus two is five. He can't. It's like it's too hard for him. Discord said, uh, true, I agreed with Keem's assessment since the first episode. It just feels like Boogie is, that's what Boogie is. He doesn't feel smart enough to be truly calculated. He just seems like a useless because he just seems like a useless because he seems like he won't eat the cupcake individual who enjoys not trying and being a victim. Yeah, he just won't eat the cupcake to save his life. It's like they're handing him a cupcake over and over again. And he's like, no, no. Or he'll eat what some of you said it in chat like a month ago or something like, a boogie is a guy like you force feed the cupcake to and he pretends to eat it, but then spits it out later. That's boogie. That's a boogie. We're dealing with him. It's great. I just, I just think like if you guys are going to let him on, it's more insulting even to you guys as like fucking friends in this situation. Me and Boogie, we're never going to be friends. That's no. never going to happen. And that's fine. No. Trust me. I'm looking, never who is looking forward to it anyways. Yeah, and by yeah. the way, it's funny that like you said, you haven't watched my content for years, but you watched the Keffels one, which is literally two months old. So another fucking lie I detected right there. No, what I'm saying but, is. Uh, uh, anyway, no, 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 no. The, no, the other watch, thing is. No, let me send. I had okay. to watch that one for the show. Because we you talked to about watch it. that one for the show. Okay. So yeah. fucking. I several other people. people. I, I, but I skimmed yours. Why did you say it at the time? Because Boogie, I can't, Boogie, because Boogie I can't, will make an assumption on me and say that I'm attack. a rage baiter I, because I haven't middle, done that. in the middle of a fucking panic it. attack, it's kind of hard okay. to... Whatever, I don't, I, whatever, cool. It's another manipulation tactic. Because you'll, 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 you'll cry on this camera. No, you'll cry on the camera when Keem and everyone else is talking. How does Mudahart kind of sound like Charlie? It keeps throwing me off. When I put the heat on, then you flipped to this fucking... I haven't cried. I wouldn't talk about crying. What are you talking about? 15, 20 minutes ago, you were in here. I have no memory of Your emotions, your manipulation, it flips on a dime, doesn't work on me. I've dealt with... Stephanie says, but what if he doesn't want to show the papers because he has a mental disability? I actually think he might have something on his paperwork that he doesn't want us to see, like a Munchausen's or like something like that, or he doesn't. And that's also just a lie. Like, I wonder if a therapist or psychologist who is very serious about diagnosing Boogie, what would they diagnose him with? Like, very serious. Like, somebody who is actually interested in figuring out Boogie's pathology. Honestly, we should get Dr. Kirkonda to watch Boogie. It'd be hard to go through it all. You have to send Dr. Kirkonda, like, a specific video with timestamps or something for him to watch. And he'll watch it, most likely, if people ask. But we should get Dr. Kirkonda to review Boogie. Because I want to know, like, what is going on with a Boogie? What is it? What is it? And by the way, guys, you know what's ironic? is like there are so many successful narcissists. There are so many successful every diagnosis you can think of in the world. Your diagnosis isn't always the reason you can't, but sometimes it is. And that's the thing. Sometimes it is why you can't do something and sometimes it's not. That's why you have to know why. So when people go, I do this because of this. Yeah, but why? Example, when people were celebrating the death of the firefighter who died, which is disgusting, by the way, why? Well, their their team was mean first, so I get to be mean. Why? Well, because I'm going to fight fire with fire. Why? Well, because that's just how you do it in politics. Why? Well, because it's always been that way since like day one. Why? What do you mean why? That's just how it is. Why? But like for real, for real, why? Why are there people in my comment section saying I have no problem not feeling bad for homophobes dying, when the idea is not that you're feeling bad that the homophobe died, you're feeling bad that human beings got to the point in which the only solution was violence. You're not supposed to celebrate humanity losing itself. And then you wonder why the world sucks. You are a reflection of the world. The world is a reflection of us as a whole. If you're celebrating people getting being at their worst, like, hello, like, we're not excited that Boogie's fucked up. We, I think we should figure out what's wrong with him to see if he can get better. I think people can get better. I just think you need to be introspective enough to do it. 
So you can actually tell yourself, I'm ready to face myself. But not very many people want to face themselves. So why are you celebrating people? Like when I read about the Civil War, it is the most devastating fucking shit. When they say brother against brother, bro, that shit should make you cry. That shit should make you fucking cry. That you couldn't figure out your own shit enough that you had to go against your own fucking brother, bro. Humanity should be in mourning that we still can't figure out how to make peace. And also accept that we can't get there because new babies are born every day and new drama is born every day and new hate is born every day and discrimination and prejudice and bigotry is just part of our nature. Everything we do is in our nature, including our successes. I know we focus on the nature that is bad in humans, but just like FYI, the nature that is also good in humans is our nature. So like, you you know what I mean? There is something going on with Boogie. I want to know what it is. I want to know what it is. Tons of people I, like you. I, in the past. I have no memory. I cut them out of my life. I call it where it is. Oh, if they have you on the, the show, you are one hundred percent one of the worst people to be on the internet. These guys put their one reputation the on the line. Yeah, yeah that's, one that's, of the worst. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the worst. Out of your yeah. mind, destiny alone one of the is worst. worse than me. The person one that of the worst. right now has Was defended. Lying He's defended rapists. And I didn't lie. Here's the fucking thing. I okay, still sure, have cancer. It's another cyclical loop. I still another have cancer. I it still is another have cancer. Loop. I still it's have cancer. You're just looping right? again. At the end of the day, what it is. the lie was it wasn't. If you have them on here again, but I still you might have well, cancer. You might as well bring another little one. But I still have cancer. I still have cancer. But I still have cancer. But I still have cancer. Boogie, please stop. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Okay, I had to get rid of them for a second. Um. Okay. Wings, go ahead. God. I think I think Mood is being very unfair with this because there's a good chance that Boogie might have the cancer. He just doesn't have it documented. And Boogie wants to like lie to cover up lies. Like the whole thing, oh, it's not on my it's not on my portal, it's on my medical chart. That's not gonna happen. You're not gonna go to three doctors and get three diagnoses and none of them update the portal with your diagnosis, especially when it's usually updated within minutes of something happening. It's usually automated. My wife had diabetic uh, diabetic acid ketosis uh, in January of this year. And I was sitting in the in the emergency room with her, and as the blood work was coming in, it was hitting her portal, and I could see her blood work right then and there. It's not something that takes days or to update it. The systems are almost automated at this point. Um, I did. I just feel like Boogie himself. He spends too much effort in lying, and he's ready to like one foot in the grave. Let's take the plane and nosedive it anytime. Maybe he's just a pathological liar. Maybe because of his childhood abuse, he just never learned how to tell the truth in a space that was safe. Right? We're not a psychology channel. We're a philosophy channel. But hey, we've all got trauma. We've all been to therapy. Okay? I get it. So maybe he just never felt safe enough. Like, I always joke with my parents. Like, they'll say, why have some of my children lied about things? I was like, oh, because it was never safe to tell the truth in your house. Not ever, by the way. My parents are much blunter now. And we do feel mostly safe telling the truth. But sometimes, you know, you don't want to pick a fight with your mom over who you voted for. Okay? So you say nothing. Or when, you know, we don't do that anymore. This is why I say I stopped. Because when I was younger, I lied like everybody else did. Like, oh, where were you last night? Uh, I was at the library. I wasn't at no library. Well, actually, knowing me, I probably was at the library. But you know what I mean. And then I eventually decided not to lie anymore because I realized that me lying was contributing to a lying world. So that's Brittany's values. You don't have to do that. It's really crazy, honestly. It's like super unreasonable. But I only lie in various like gun to my head survival situations, which I've never been in. Thank God. But the reason I stopped lying and I would just tell my mom, don't ask questions you don't want answers to because I will answer it. So she'll be like, where were you? And I'm like, I was at the BDSM dungeon. And she's like, why did you tell me that? And I was like, you asked. I wouldn't do that normally. Normally, I'd say I'm out with friends or I'm busy doing something else. In life, you get opportunities to be like, I will be extra honest with you if you want me to. But obviously, if you're born, if you're born into an environment that's really, really toxic and you can never tell the truth right? Like my mom would roll her eyes. That was the consequence. Maybe in Boogie's household, if you told the truth, you got, you know, you weren't allowed to eat. I don't know what his life was like. There is a correlation, not a causation, but a correlation, maybe correlation causation, maybe between major obesity and childhood trauma. Like anorexia is a mental health crisis. Obesity is too. Come on guys. No healthy human being weighs 600 pounds there's something going the fuck on so same with boogie people don't just act like this something is going on a pathological liar is a suffering human being a narcissist is a suffering human being narcissism is a horrible horrible personality disorder 
the suffering is there, though there is some research and in, in hope for the future that people can get better. They used to think borderline people were hopeless. They used to throw them into asylums. And now look at us thriving because one woman with borderline went, maybe I can fix this. Went to school, got her degree, became a psychologist and wrote DBT. Marsha Linehan, shout out. And she's like, maybe I can fix this. Every, we have so much we haven't figured out about the world. And Boogie is one of them. Now I think he's a one in the sense that I don't think his mental illness is the reason he's not getting better, but I do think his unwillingness to face whatever it is, is the problem. But then what if the thing he has can't let him face himself? I don't think that's the case, but maybe, maybe. And that's the thing that's interesting to me is does Boogie have a thing that makes him like this or can he actually face himself and fix the thing or at least mitigate it? Because if he can do that, if he can be introspective enough for a minute to be like, hey, I think there's something wrong with me, a real thing that I need to fix that puts me in this position time and time again at 50 years old, dude, you know, that would be amazing. Now, just because someone is suffering doesn't mean you got to pull their weight for them. Stop stepping around these men's feelings. Stop walking on eggshells around these men's feelings. Put your foot down. I'm open, but with boundaries. I'm open, but with boundaries. I would love to see you get help. I'm open with boundaries. You know, that's it. Because you can't keep, you can't. Now, Keem is, this is what Keem is struggling with now. Keem is struggling with himself. Do I help Boogie? Or do I give up on him? That's really what this conversation is about, right? And slash, do I lose my potential of having a good partner for my show? Because Boogie, regardless of how we feel about him, is entertaining. Um, a problem actually arises. Yeah. He was just honest right, right at the beginning of it. We could have worked through this. And I think we should still work through this and get his bone marrow test done, even if local has to pay for it. Because Whoa. it's better to know than to just wonder mm. and just continually to lie over and over again. <sighs> I'm putting a really shitty situation. Their willingness to pay for it is kind of amazing. It's kind of amazing. See, that's interesting. What What are you thinking? Uh, put put your put your messy brain there, thoughts out there. Wings, there's so much pressure on me to kick him off the show. Like I like first of all, I'm like against this cancer culture shit, and like I don't see it black and white. Like this is some scammer out there like trying to con people that he has cancer. I see it as fucking stupid, mentally ill, fucking boogie who always loves to be a fucking victim, who can't help himself from telling white lies constantly, right? Who gets told, right. hey, you have the indicators that it could be this cancer, and without any confirmation, runs to the internet and tells them. That's how it, I say it, I don't it, see it as it, like here, fucking- here's, here's some pro Boogie rhetoric right here for you. Boogie didn't start a GoFundMe. Boogie didn't ask anybody to pay for his cancer. He made a video that made like $120 out of 250,000 views. So it wasn't very- Damn, that's true. Boogie never did a GoFundMe because I make you prove you have cancer. He never asked anyone to fund his cancer bills. He just said, I'm really struggling. Please like the stream. I'm really struggling. Please join the Patreon. I'm really struggling, which is fine because technically you're paying for his content. You're not paying directly for his medical bills. I get it. Okay. I've been there. We've all been there. You know? Okay. Very, very monetized, if at all. Right. And like for the most part, yeah, there have been issues where he's like, oh, my cancer, this cancer. Yeah, he tried to use cancer to get out of like a, a episode with me and Tommy one week or some shit like that. I, I don't I don't see him as using it as a way to make money. And there's still a good chance he has it. He just hasn't done all the tests needed to do it. But there's also that chance you, he does the test and it comes back. He's never had it at all. Ooh. And he just had a really bad, a really bad case of sleep apnea. I just I can't I don't want to fire him. I don't want to kick him off the show. And that might destroy the show. Everyone might, might fucking hate the show now and not want to support the show. I mean, d dude, what Muta is saying is true. Do you know how many people out there have lost family members to cancer? Mm -hmm. And this thing that Everybody. Boogie did, even though I can see it for what it is, he's just an idiot, right? That hurts a lot of people. Like people are like fucking devastated and hurt by this shit. That I feel you. My grandma, my grandma died from cancer. My, my, my grandfather died from cancer. My grandfather's brother died from cancer. My father's most likely going to die from cancer. I have I'm at most least likely going to die from cancer. I have at least five. Everyone members. does. So everyone does. I think we all have people in our life who have died from cancer, which is why it's important to make sure that we're getting checked up. Right. Because we could be that other family member. But yeah, of course, I have 10 siblings. The joke in the family is which one of us is dying from cancer. It's just got to be one of us. Right. So, yeah, it's probably going to happen. 
Now, I'm really lucky. I will say this, and I mean this in the most uh, affectionate way, lovely way, respectful way. What Boogie lies about in regards to cancer can't hurt my family. Because my family's life doesn't revolve around Boogie. I don't care if people lie about having cancer. It doesn't make our cancer go away. But it might make people resilient or hesitant or bitter about people talking about having cancer. I mean, gosh, how many of us have marched in cancer parades or, you know, I've raised so much money for cancer as just like the companies I worked for, or like, you know, you, you're part of a club or a group, they raise money for cancer. So maybe that impacts that element of it. But what Boogie does with his life isn't really going to hurt anybody unless you take it personal, which I recommend you don't do. Right? Don't take what some guy on the internet does personal. What's really impacting people is not one YouTuber on the internet. It's society's, in, in, it's society's uh, predisposition to form prejudice and then form bias because of one situation or even 10. Right? Connor says he did do the crypto scam to pay for his cancer medical bills. He didn't do the crypto to pay for his cancer. Like he did the crypto to pay for his cancer, but he didn't tell his viewers, buy my crypto so I can pay for cancer. And his viewers didn't go, I'm only buying crypto so Boogie can pay for his cancer. If Boogie said, I'm like you, if, if Boogie's viewers only did the crypto to only pay for his cancer, then it would be a scam. But if they paid for the crypto because they wanted the crypto and the perk was that they paid for his cancer, who cares, right? So I feel like Boogie's claim that he used the money he made to pay for his cancer bills, though a lie, because CoffeeZilla proved that, that's fine. That's not a scam. I feel like that's the problem I've always had with CoffeeZilla's work is like he calls things a scam that aren't a traditional scam. They're a lie that appears to be scam or scummy. Like that's not what a scam is, right? A scam is I'm paying for something and I'm getting something that I didn't pay for. And Boogie offered a cryptocurrency, which they got. You know, so that's not technically a scam. So I feel like sometimes that's why I don't get into CoffeeZilla stuff because I feel like he calls things a scam. Like that's not what a scam is, but I understand because it's kind of scam light. Or different, I mean, we, should, we should have different terminology for like different kinds of scams, you know? And, and it, and it, but, but at the same time, it's like Boogie is a professional victim and this is why he's a low cow and this is why it's low cow live. I don't see Boogie doing all the nefarious things that come with, with faking cancer. Granted, he's, he's pioneering shit here. I, but he's not like, oh, I've got this. Hey, come donate from a medical treatment so I go on vacation. He hasn't done that. Yeah, he's not, he's not, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Wings, we're going to leave it at that. See you, man. See you, buddy. Oh, this was a tough one. This is a tough one. But I did promise, uh, if you've seen the chat um, at the very beginning of the show, I did promise you, without a shadow of a doubt, that we would get the medical records before the end of the show. And we got it. We got confirmation that this cancer um, of the blood thing is not in his portal. And it's probably not in his medical records. They think that it possibly is cancer. And I do believe he is getting treated for possible cancer, but it's just not confirmed. I'm not letting him get away with anything. By the way, all these people that like, you know, want to ramp this up, like you need to fire him. You're letting him get off and all that. Bro, he got exposed on this show. Every fucking major YouTuber ran with this story. Boogie is now known for lying about cancer because of the show. He yeah. didn't get away. There is no getting away. Mm. He's fucking down bad. What if Keemstar unconditionally loves Boogie? Because this is sometimes what unconditional love, not literally, but I'm just reusing it to have the conversation. Sometimes like you can make excuses for people, but they're not excuses. You just like can't hate the person. Like, look, I unconditionally love the people I unconditionally love. It doesn't matter what they do. I can't stop loving them. And I can't help but roll my eyes at their stupidity. But also like I can get mad at them and be like, why did you do that? Why would you do this? And then I would still visit them in prison if they ever went to prison, you know, hopefully nobody ever does anything bad enough to go to prison. But, you know, some, it's like Keem has a really hard time. Like, you know, like I'm not saying he unconditionally loves Boogie, but I'm just saying like this is sometimes what it can look like. Like, yeah, what are you going to do? People suck. You know, it's something like that. You know, it's like he wants Boogie there. Keep him there. He wants Boogie out. Throw him out. 
you know? Again, you it, I'm not saying Keem literally loves Boogie. You guys understand I'm using it as an example of what it can look like, right? Yes? Are we on the same page? I'm saying that that's the attitude, though. Like, people are like, why can't you? Ha-? Like, Keem can't hate Boogie. Why would you hate him? Even if you don't unconditionally love him, like, I don't hate Boogie. I don't care. Like, I literally can't take any of this personal. Why would I? But there are people who are taking it personal. And it's like, why? You know? Connor says, I think it's because Keem has also made a bunch of bad mistakes. That's true. Keem is not a great person. Like, he's made a lot of fucked up mistakes. But that's the thing is, like, sometimes the best person to have empathy for you is somebody who's been there. And maybe you can't have empathy for Boogie because you've never been that shit of a person. But maybe that's also a problem. Who knows? Bad. He is down bad, ladies and gentlemen. He is? There is no getting away. But I just, I, I, when it comes to firing him, that's where it's like, I just, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. I wish I could see pure evil in this guy like other people do because it would be so easy. I'd be yeah. like, fuck you. I can't either. I don't, I don't think Boogie is pure evil. I think he's closer to his evil than his joy. So evil to me in a philosophy sense is furthest from your joy, your symbiosis. So I don't believe in evil, right? It's a construct. Evil is a construct of the thing that is like (gasps) the worst of us. But Boogie is not the literal worst of us. Cause come on guys, I think we can come up with better examples of the worst kind of people. Boogie is a version of some of the most damaged kind of people. He's kind of the worst of some kinds of people, but he's often, and I'm sorry to say this, a large representation of lots of people suffering who are homeless right now and in deep poverty. Guys, that is why people literally have a hard time helping people in these situations, because when you try to, they're a boogie. It's hard. I have a boogie in my life, um, kind of like I have people who are like boogie, like no matter how much you help them. No matter how much they're always like on food stamps or refuse to help people, they're always in debt. They're always complaining. They're overweight, like in a dangerous way, but then use it as a, they literally stay fat so they can claim disability. It's very interesting. And that's like a pathology. That's like something is going on here. We've got a pattern, you know? And I do think it's mental health, but I also think it's a lack of introspection. You stay in a bad position in your life so you can use it but I don't even know if they're doing it on purpose. Like who so much are they doing it because they don't know what else to do. And that's why every case is going to be different. It's going to be different case to case. But I don't, I see a legitimate fucking head case that has serious fucking problems that gets in these little panic attacks and can't help himself, but to not fucking lie and fib or Mm. like jump the gun, like freak out and fucking, oh, you think I might have cancer? Let me go make a video and announce the world that I do have cancer. That is the boogie I know. Mm. That is the boogie I know. He's a fucking mess. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as evil. I don't see him as evil. I just don't. Does he do evil things? Yes, but I don't see him as inherently fucking evil. Look, I'm a solutions-based girl. I know it's really easy because we're all in our ego to write people off. And I think it's your right to write people off. I write people off all the time. Okay. I'm not saying it because I think they're literally lost. I just can't help them right now because obviously the tools I have aren't going to help you. But I don't think every person, I think every person is redeemable. I believe in that. I have to deeply believe in it. It is such a core belief of my value systems, but I try not to reward bad behavior. And I think that's kind of the key here. If Keemstar lets Boogie stay in the show, is he rewarding bad behavior? That's an interesting question. Because who is Boogie really hurting but himself? You could say his family, his friends, his girlfriend, maybe his audience. This is a really interesting dilemma of values. What if Boogie desperately needs the help and you're abandoning him by firing him and taking away his ability to pay his mortgage. Because Boogie is relying on this income to pay his mortgage and he has got two people living with him and animals. If Keem fires him, you know, and this is all of society. All of society deals with people in their communities and their families and their politics. We are sitting here asking why the world can't have peace. We can't even figure out Boogie. You want world peace? Like Mariah said, you can't even walk your chicken back to the fridge section. You put it on the shelf when you decide you don't want it. I can't even get you guys to return the carts back to the cart thing. And you want world peace, girl? It is outrageous the way we expect things from people. And that's why I say let go of the attachment in a healthy way. 
and radically accept that people are gonna do exactly what they're gonna do. You still have to do what you're gonna do. If you think people are bad for not putting the cart back in the cart thing, but then you start to do it because while well, they're doing it, two wrongs do not make a right. I don't know if you learned that in kindergarten, but two wrongs do not make a right. In my head, in real life while I'm bed, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.